show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. It's The Trigger, Rich Bontrager, back on another Sunday night, and we are thrilled tonight, not just because we have another great guest, because we are going to be streaming, and we are streaming for the very first time with the PPN Network public place network we are thrilled to be here and are you are in for a great show tonight let me ask you a question what would you do if you lost your sight how much would it limit your vision and your dreams for your life that's actually what happened to my guest tonight and yet he's lived an amazing life pursuing his dreams and actually achieving them again welcome to the rock the stage show i'm your host rich bontrager if you're new to this show Thank you for joining us here on the PPN Network. It's new to the network, but we've been going for over four years. In fact, we are now celebrating our four-year anniversary. Be sure to join the community, leave comments, and enjoy this week's unscripted, casual conversation. And boy, you are in for a treat. Tonight, we have Lex Gillette with us. He has quickly become one of the world's most sought-after keynote speakers. He has got a great story. Losing his sight at the age of eight, Lex is the best totally blind long jump triple jumper in the history of the U.S. Paralympic movement. He is the current world record holder in the long jump, a five-time Paralympic medalist, a four-time long jump world champion, and an 18-time national champion. And just so we can compare that, when I did long jump way back, I didn't do anything like he did. Lex, welcome to Rock the Stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I have been waiting to talk to you for a while. And our common friend, Deborah, put us in connection. And she yeah. just showered love and admiration about this amazing guy that I had to have on the show. Uh, I, I love Deborah. She's more amazing than I am. So, uh, <laughs> I, you know, that's that's awesome. But, yeah, I love Deborah. So... Walt well, Disney said this, I love to do the impossible. You've been doing the impossible, haven't you? Mm. A lot of people would say so. I think that, uh, I, I guess I would have to agree. I mean, blind at a young age. Now, let, let's just step back in time for a little bit. At the age of eight, what was it like? A painful process, was it a quick process of losing sight? How did that happen to it? How much did that really impact your growing up? It was a gradual decrease in sight. So at that particular time, eight years old, I'm running around my neighborhood. At that point, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Grew up in Raleigh, had a had a childhood that most people would say, oh, you know, things were, were going great. Played video games with my friends, would run around my neighborhood. We would play hide and seek. We had a tree house in the backyard. Things were great. And there was one day that I had come home from school and started to experience the sight loss, which it was definitely challenging because you you find yourself in a moment where the day before things were absolutely normal. And the next day you experienced blurred sight and it was, you know, it was tough going to the doctors and going through all of the examinations, all of the operations, and then to hear those words from the doctor, we've done all that we can do. Yeah. You'll most likely become blind. That was, you know, it, it was pretty excruciating. Oh, certainly. So having sight, now you're fully blind. You have to learn to read and all these other things with braille and other techniques. That's yeah. a massive learning curve for anybody at any age, yet you're a yeah. young child learning that, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know the things about, the thing about children, kids, they are super resilient. And I always tell people I'm glad that I lost my sight at an early age in comparison to when you get older, you are established in your life. You have a 
job, you might have a family, you you're doing all of these things and to lose your sight at that particular time in life, that is a huge, that's a huge challenge, whereas still a challenge as a child, but you only know what you know, you've only been on the earth for a few years. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I was able to kind of grapple it at an early age and, and be surrounded around some amazing people who helped me to see what was possible and help me see the alternatives that were available. Well, and as a public speaker, I know you talk about no need for sight when you have vision. Yeah. Now, before we get into that, you have to have a sense of humor. You have a book title <laughs> like that, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love to have fun. And largely, I mean, I'm just naturally, I like to joke and have a lot of fun in general, but um, we just, we live in a world right now where, um, you know, people might label it as, you know, sensitive or you know, whatever types of words that you want to put out there. And when people meet me, I just want you to understand that, listen, uh, like, yes, I have a disability. I'm blind. You don't have to like, be super just uh, uh, what's the word that I want to use? like, just just talk to me. Let's have a good time. Let's have a conversation. I don't take things to uh, I don't take myself too uh you know, serious so just just let's just have a conversation let's have a good time because ultimately at the end of the day I I want to ensure that if you ever come in contact with someone who is blind or visually impaired in the future that you are comfortable and you don't feel as though you have to you know I have people who say oh well have you have you seen this movie and they stop themselves and oh, oh I'm sorry I'm like, man, listen, like that's general speech. Like, I'm not going to be mad at you for saying that, that I see something. I totally understand what's going on now. I might come back at you and say, what do you mean that I see it? I'm blind. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, listen, like it's uh, like, it's not that serious. <laughs> You're not afraid to pop off and then really have fun with that, which is uh, great because humor is such a way to get through the frustration, the pains, humor yeah. has helped me and so many people get beyond it yes how much yes. did that help you did it really help you through that transitional years and again a long jumper a blind long a blind long jumper how many jokes could jay leno or you know somebody <laughs> make up about you come on get real uh, man, you know what one of my favorite speakers Jeannie robertson um she was all about humor right yeah. And I could only imagine what sorts of stories she would be able to tell had we been able to meet in person. And she's from North Carolina, which, <laughs> you know, I'm from North Carolina, too. So um, but yeah, like after I got through the grieving process, you know, literally just understanding that this would be my reality moving forward. Yeah. Humor became a. That was a superpower for me because I always wanted to, again, make sure that people were comfortable around me and I didn't want them to feel as though they just had to you know, operate in a, in a certain way. Like, I want you to be yourself when, when we hang out. Well, and as we're recording this, it, it's, it's March 1st. We just wrapped up Black Heritage Month. Yeah. And you're African-American, you're a Paralympian, you're a champion in long jump, and you're blind. How many different things could people have labeled and jumped on you to make it harder to not be accepted? Do you embrace that, that, that you are a leader and influencer in the Black community? And is that something that you are proud of and leading strongly in, do you think? That's a very interesting question. Um... Yes, I do embrace that because last time I checked, I am African American, <laughs> and um, you know I have a platform not only from an athletic standpoint, but when people invite me to come and speak, and so I do think that there are a lot of issues from a an African American standpoint, a racial standpoint that you know that need to be addressed and things that need to be you know changed. And beyond that, as a person who checks multiple boxes as it relates to minority, because I am a person with a disability as well. Mm -hmm. And so being an advocate for both communities is very important to me. And especially 
when you think about being in the community of, of folks who have a disability, every day that I walk out of my home, there's probably something that I'm having to overcome. It yes. is a person's perception. It might be some sort of inequity, uh, you know, something like, uh, you know, for example, going into a restaurant and, and say there's not a, a Braille menu or um, you know, say there's, uh, you know, if I'm in school and I'm not equipped with the, the resources that I need, I always tell people that our medical diagnosis does not disable us as much as society does. Wow. I'm intelligent. There are a lot of people out here who are intelligent. They have the abilities to do A, B, C, D, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're not equipped with the resources and tools that we need, then we can't. It makes it difficult, rather, for us to unleash our potential into the world. And so um, circling back to the teachers, my mom, family members, friends, you know, I had those people who helped me to realize that and they helped me to connect the dot that, OK, well, if you can you know, get this, you can get that and get this, then you can achieve absolutely anything on this planet. And again, perfectly said, and I think people need to understand that and that you there, there, there are so many check boxes that you could check and you could sit down and say too many check boxes. I'm done. You've gone the other direction, my friend. You literally said, I don't accept that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reality, but you don't accept it, do you? Definitely not. It's, it's not. And and my mom, she was a really good example that I saw on a, no pun intended, that I saw on a, a daily basis because she is African American. She's a woman. And she also has a visual impairment. And I rarely ever mention that because I never, it just wasn't anything that I thought about because I saw her every day get up, doesn't have a driver's license, made sure that I was able to get to school, made sure that she was able to get to work. When I got home, I had to do my homework. There was food on the table. Uh, you know, she you know, read stories. We, we walked to the park and we did all of just amazing things together at Christmas time. I had presents under the tree. I had everything that I could ever want. So it just never factored into my mind that, you know, she, she checks more boxes than I do. I mean, she's a woman as well. And so yeah. we see the challenges that women face within the, the United States as well. So um, it was a, a no excuse, never give up. It doesn't matter what people think about you type attitude. You go into the world and whatever you see yourself doing, you decide what it is that you can do. No one else decides that. Amen. <laughs> now, you talk on leadership and vision. And what's the difference between having sight and having vision? Because I know you talk about this, because yep. there's a big difference. Yeah, sight is what we see right now. You know, I'm within the four walls of my room. There's there's the the ceiling fan above my head. You might not be able to see it, but I have I have a massive Jordan collection. It's to my right hand side, and the the, the shoes are literally from ceiling, uh, from ground to ceiling. Uh, <laughs> that's what you see right now. That's your current reality. Whereas vision allows you to see past your current reality. It allows you to see what it is that you can do, where you can go, and who you can become. So when I had lost my sight. It was very challenging for me because I literally couldn't see anything anymore. But the one thing that I realized is that we live on an earth that is comprised of vision. The things, the buildings that we walk inside of, the cars we drive, the books that we read, these were all just ideas inside of someone's mind at a certain point in time. They had the wherewithal the resilience, the, the willpower to see that vision and not only just see it because just because you see something doesn't guarantee that it's going to become reality. You see it, you develop a plan, you connect with the right people because if it truly is a vision, something of that magnitude, you can't do it alone. You need other people. You need other abilities, other skill sets, other talents. And when you mesh all of those things together and you have 
the that that willpower and that relentlessness and you go after that next thing you know it's something it's not in your mind anymore it's something that you can literally like you can touch that like you can stretch your arms out it is something that you literally can can hug and say listen like many years ago i just thought about this but this is now something that is in my hands it's, it's, it's similar to when i train for the paralympics yeah. and i think about you know paris is coming up i want to win yes. gold and we started this journey in 2021 after the tokyo paralympics um three years later you know god willing i'm gonna be able to stand on that podium and that goal that i've been dreaming about and i've been training for it it won't be a thought anymore it'll be a tangible item that someone will place around my neck. Well, and you intentionally extrapolate from your long jumping career, you extrapolate and bring it into the leadership realm as well, yep. because you, you talk about dream it. There's the rise there's the takeoff. There's the flight, but you also talk about, you can see the landing, which is astounding for a blind guy to talk about seeing the landing. Yeah. I've seen you, you stick it. Yeah. How do you yeah, do I, that? I, like, I have to see it mm. because I live within a world that constantly tells me that I can't see it. And they might not tell me, but they might, with their actions, show me that, you know, what, you can't see this. And again, coming from the home that my mom created for me, you know, I, I'll just refuse to be blinded by other people's words and their actions. And every time that I step on stage or in any casual conversation, when I meet people um, in my mind, I have one goal and that is to teach people to see, see what's possible, see their potential, see that if they take the necessary steps that they can be, you know, they can be better today than what they were yesterday and there's so many different i mean yes i talk about leadership talk about vision yeah talk about trust talk about him. communication i mean I, like when i'm running and jumping i have a guy 12. standing at the takeoff board and he's clapping and yelling yeah so i know which direction to run and we which have about 115 feet in between us so that takes me about 16 strides to cover that distance so that takes, I mean, there's so many different Absolutely life perfect. lessons and that so many be... lessons from a business standpoint that you can extrapolate from that. Um, because again, like we want to ensure that we are our best selves personally and as a, as a business, you know, there, there's goals and things that we want to do um, in, in business, your competitor as well in the market space, whatever industry that you operate in. So we want to make sure that whoever is under our roof has a similar mindset and similar thinking so that we can go out here and get to the top of that figure to podium. Like-minded people wrapping yourself with people have the vision, the like-minded passion, desire. And especially when you have the challenges that you have, you have yep. to have the right people around. Otherwise oh, yeah. they're going to suck your energy. Uh, totally. Cancel your dream out. And you don't need any of that negativity. Do you? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I, I don't want, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> now going back to your childhood, were you already long jumping before you're blind or did you be begin this after you were blind? It was afterwards. Um, I'm gonna come back to that in a second. So my mom, yeah. my mom's side of the family is that they're, they're the athletic side. She played softball, my aunties, my uncles, they, they played it off from softball, baseball, basketball, you know, anything. It was nothing for the the family to be in my grandmother's backyard, which is very expansive. And, you know, we're out there playing you know, kickball or whatever it is. And so I was already naturally athletic. Prior to losing my sight, I played rec league baseball. I learned how to swim. So I, you know, I had some athletic abilities. But once I lost my sight, I had to kind of relearn those things. Now, having no sight and i feel like that's this that is a really good question because it's so different when you approach something never having the ability to see it before 
Yeah. Like imagine standing at the free throw line and somebody's like, oh, okay, close your eyes and shoot this ball. Someone like, let's say like Steph Curry, for example, if he looks at the basket and shoots it, <laughs> you know, he's, that's easy. He's, he see it. Seen it's it. all net. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder what, and he probably still would be able to do it in this, this next scenario, but let's say we were in a totally different room. He's blindfolded and someone guides him to the free throw line and stands him in front of the hoop. That's a totally different situation because you haven't seen it before. Right. So what do you need to tap into internally to be able to get those same results? Well, you were talking about resources earlier. You yeah. needed someone to do the clapping. You needed someone to help step that off. You needed someone to say, there really is a sand pit and you're not going to hurt yourself. You needed yeah. someone to literally be an extension of you, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. And I was so fearful of running into something, a pole or veering too far to the left or to the right. And you know, no, like I didn't know what was out there. Yeah. And that was, that was, that was a, that was a, a hurdle. Um, but Mr. Whitmer, my, my teacher of the visually impaired, he painted that picture for me and he said, Lex, listen, I understand what you might be feeling. This is wide open space. You don't have to worry about running into anything. If you veer too far to the left or to the right, this rubberized surface, the runway that is mm. outstretched in front of you is flush with the grass that that is on either side of you. So if you go too far to the left or to the right, don't worry about it. I'll just tell you to stop. We'll go back to the start mark. We'll try it again. The only thing that I want you to focus on is listening to the sound of my voice, running as fast as possible, as straight as possible, counting your strides, and at the right stride, the right step, you'll leap and you'll land into the sand. And he showed me, you know, even before we we tried the long jump. He showed me the runway, showed me how wide it is, how long it is, showed me the takeoff board that's in the ground. That's where you jump from. Then he also showed me the, the sand pit, shows me how wide it is, how long it is. I always tell people that, you know, it was it was a blessing that I was able to see at a certain point in time because I do have a reference as to what certain things look like. Yeah, I've never seen anyone participate in long jump, and I have very vague memories of seeing people compete in track and field as a whole. But, um, you know, one of my, it's, it's awesome when someone can, they articulate the plan to you. They, they show you what it is that you're, that you're dealing with and then give you the freedom to go out there and, and try it with their, with their assistance. Well, and all of that really encompasses also what you talk about from the stage. You, you, you actually challenge people during your keynotes Take a shot in the dark. Oh, yeah. Be bold. Oh, yeah. How, how much bolder can you be than being a guy running down a track, pushing off, flying through the air, and landing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but I do. what I do know is that everyone has the ability to take that same leap. Um, you know, this this is a leap year. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and so, you know, that... that is a the message in that is you know sometimes you do have to take that leap sometimes you do have to take that shot in the dark um and you talking about that just takes me back to childhood because i had the i had the the nerf net that was in my room and didn't really know when i would make baskets so i would take that safety pin and i would tie the bottom loops of the net together so that when i would shoot the ball would go in and it would stay inside of the net so i would know when I would make a basket. And so I really challenged myself to shoot from everywhere in that room and to make the shot. So I told myself that if I had, if I could bring to the world that same energy, anything that I approach, if I had that same sort of mindset, I could you know, toss the ball up, make the basket and, and put some points up on life scoreboard. And I totally believe that, you know, again, when I get on stage, that is my goal. Like I want to ensure that people can, they can, they can run the score up out here. 
Well, your your TED Talk is outstanding, and we will have a link in the description later on because your TED Talk is a home run, my friend. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, seeing you stand on the dot and not move outside of the dot, a lot of people can't do that to begin with. <laughs> and yet you were moving, you were jumping, you were animated, and it astounded me how natural it looked for you to do it, and yet you nailed a home run. I appreciate that. I think a lot of it stems from after I lost my sight, my mom, she, you know, again, she found those resources for me. I learned how to read Braille. I learned how to use the technology with the the speech software on the computers and the smartphones so that I could achieve day to day tasks. But the other thing is she found an orientation and mobility specialist, which is someone who helps you learn how to use a cane. So sliding your cane from left to right, left to right, knowing when to step on curbs, go upstairs, avoid obstacles. Um, but I was like, I was the kid that I hated using my cane because <laughs> I'm in like middle school, high school, you're starting to like girls and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't want to use this cane. So what I did is I ditched the cane and I started to learn how to navigate by, by sound how my mm. footsteps sounded, bouncing off of walls, off of buildings, learning how to, you know, understanding the textures of the ground under my feet. And so I, I literally got to the point where I could navigate around my neighborhood based off of sound and feeling. So I would run on the sidewalk. And once I got to the grass, I knew to, I knew I could turn to the right and run upstairs. And then once I got to the landing, I knew to turn left and run there and then I could easily navigate to my front door and wow. um and so I took that I took that that skill that ability into you know how can I leverage this in you know in life how can I use all of my other senses to get from point a to point b learning yeah. to adapt I mean, you, you learn to make it your own journey. You didn't yeah. do it the way others do it. You would totally. learn and then keep adapting. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure you still do that today too, right? Absolutely. Oh yeah. That's a, that is a critical skill that like we all need that because sometimes you know, everything isn't going to happen in that desired fashion. So when things are shaken up a little bit, what are you going to do? Hmm. And we all have to answer that question. What are we going to do when it didn't go the way you planned? Yep. Now, I'm very curious because as a child, I went through a lot of medical stuff. Imagination was one of the biggest things for me. I was a dreamer. I still am a dreamer. I could see the crowd. I could hear the action. Yeah. Did you have that capability? And how much does that help you to get to where you're at? Oh my gosh. Yes. Like when I used to shoot on, when I used to shoot on that basketball hoop, you know, I'm, I'm clear across the room and I'm throwing it up. Gillette, he throws it up at the buzzer. Oh! Nice. Like, I'm like, and, and I always told myself that like, that's the type of, that is the type of response that I want. That is a sort of, I don't want to use the word validation, um, but that that's the sort of, you know, those are the results that I want from my actions. When I step out here and I approach you know, issues, challenges, problems, whatever you want to call them, you know, when I achieve those things in my mind, that's what I want to hear. I want to feel that. I want to know that, like, I literally, you know, I, like, I can be, relied on i can be counted on when things get tough i know that i can adapt i know that i can be resilient i know that i can tap into that grit put my head down and grind it out and achieve those goals and i'm just fortunate enough to participate in in an arena in an industry if you will um you know i get to experience that you go to the Paralympic Games, there are 70, 80,000 plus people inside of the stadium and they are watching you compete. And the, the amazing thing is that when our guides are standing at that takeoff point and they're mm -hmm. clapping and yelling, mm -hmm. all 80,000 plus people are completely silent. Whoa. 
And as soon as you take off and you land in the sand, once your feet hit the sand, the entire place erupts. And that is by far one of the most, there's no doctor on the planet who can prescribe <laughs> that type of medicine. Like that is absolutely insane. Like it's, it's so wild. It's so wild. So what's it like? You, you, you're now a five-time Paralympian medalist, a four-time long jump world champion, 18-time national champion. What was it like the first time you heard that crowd and you stuck it and then you land on the podium. What was it like to actually hear that dream come alive? That was, it was, it was pretty amazing. Largely because my very first Paralympics, my mom was there. My grandmother was there. Mr. Whitmer and Mrs. Whitmer, they were in the stands. And so you think back to those times in life where it was, you know, it was pretty challenging. Yeah. losing sight, overcoming that. But thinking back to that first time of being inside of the Paralympic Stadium in Athens, Greece, 2004, Whoa, I, had, wow. I was literally like, you know, fresh out of high school, basically. And, and to have four people in the stands who engineered a lot of what I was able to do out there, that was that was awesome for them to be there to see me compete for them to, to be there, to see me stand on the podium, to receive that medal. It almost was like them getting a medal as well for all of the, the hard work that they put in, that they put in place to you know help me get to that point. Wow. And Athens, Greece. I mean, there's a little bit of yeah. history in Athens, Greece. You, oh, you yeah. realize that? <laughs> yes. Yes, there's a lot. I actually need to go back so I can, I need another vacation or something so I can, because, you know, when you go to the competitions, the main goal is to, you know, train and get ready for, yeah. for the, you know, to, to go against the world. And so sometimes you might not have the freedom to, to get out and, and have a good time. But we did go to the Acropolis and went to oh. the first Olympic stadium, um, so we, we did do some great things, but I love to travel and, uh, you know, fortunately I've been able to, I've been traveling since I was, you know, teenager. So, uh, it's, um, it, it's, I feel very blessed and fortunate. I'll say that. So you have another Paralympic competition coming up. What's the date and where are you going to be at again? We are going to be in Paris. We actually have to, we have the Paralympic trials in July. So um, I don't see why I won't be in Paris, but you know, you got to go through, you got to check all of the boxes you got to execute. Mm -hmm. So um, the main focus right now is training hard, going to competitions, seeing where I, where I am measuring my performances and we'll go to Ju to July's Paralympic trials. And um, you know, I'm, see myself doing what I need to do there to be nominated to the team and the Paralympic Games begin don't quote me on this I think it's August the 28th I should know this but um August the 28th I believe is when the opening ceremonies will happen and I want to say I start competing on the 30th wow. uh funny story I was doing a speech a couple months ago and and uh, I met this this uh young lady and, and she said, uh, she said, oh, I'm coming to watch you compete. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, um, you know, we're, like we got Mount Sac relays and Drake relay, pin relays. Like, which one are you coming to? And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm coming to Paris. And I was like, really? She said, yeah, I just bought my ticket. The tickets were released yesterday. So I just bought my tickets. You compete in the T11 long jump and you're going to, um, or no, she asked me, do you compete in the T11 long jump mm. as confirmation? And I said, yes. So she was like, yeah, I got my tickets. I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, when do I compete? Cause I don't really keep up with the schedules until we get closer to the yeah. time for a departure. And so she was like, yeah, you compete on August the 30th at 9 PM at night. Da, 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 da. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is like, this is wild. Um, so yeah, that, that was pretty cool. But, um, We'll go out there latter part of August 
I love Paris. I've been there a few times. Mm. So it'll be great to compete. And my plan is to stay after for a little bit and enjoy myself. Wow. Lex Gillette, amazing story. By the way, what is your record jump? My world record is 6.73 meters, which is 22 feet, one inch. Like I said, <laughs> the top of the show, never got there. <laughs> <laughs> Lex That's Gillette, what is, what is the best way for people to find you, get a hold of you, connect with you? We are going to share your social media. We are going to share your TED Talk, but what's the best way to connect with you? Everywhere on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X, wherever, everything is my name. I'm pretty creative. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and LexGillette.com, you can contact me there. Please, you know, if you have questions, if you have comments, I'm like, they, my team sends me absolutely everything. So I love hearing from, you know, hearing from folks. And uh, if you need me to come out and get your team, inspired and motivated you can you know definitely reach out to me in in all of those avenues you know leadership any any sort of skill any sort of um you know aspect that you're wanting to to get your team to to learn to be educated on you know hit me up lexgillette.com well and lexgillette.com there's a qr code on the screen right now you can get the qr code scan that it will take that Take you directly to Lex's website, learn everything about him. Yes, book him to come talk. You will absolutely love what he has to offer. And uh, Lex, uh, you're you're a true rock star athlete, but I, I I think you are a great role model and a great example for so many people. And today we need role models. Today we need heroes. And I am pleased to say, I think you're standing up and shining bright in that category, my friend. Uh, I appreciate that, Rich. That means that that definitely means a lot. And you are correct. We need we need some strong, positive figures in this world. And um, you know, I'm trying to do my best to to be one of those. So thank you so much. Don't forget, get his book. No need for sight. When you have a vision, what blindness can teach us about risk and leadership. And again, we will have that link in the description as well. Lex Gillette, thanks for taking time to be with us today on Rock the State Show. Thanks, Rich. Keep rocking. Thank you much. Lex Gillette, again, world champion, Paralympian, blind, but conquering and succeeding and flying through the air and sticking an amazing story. And again, if you're new here on PPN, join us for the first premiere episode. Great to have Lex be that premiere episode. Thank you for joining us. Join the conversation, add your thoughts, your feedback, and again, come back every Sunday night for another unscripted Highly casual, but in-depth discussions with different actors, movie directors, celebrities, athletes, and much more. We'll be back here Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time for another edition of Rock the Spade Show. Until then, keep rocking, have a great week, and I'll see you next week.